Hey everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Uh, Alonzo here with Matt and Christy. The documentary Disclosure made its premiere at Sundance this year, and uh, this weekend it makes its premiere on Netflix. It is very much worth seeing on Netflix, yes. and, and not to be confused with the 90s erotic thriller <laughs> starring Michael Douglas and Demi Moore. Part of the Michael Douglas sexual panic trilogy. <laughs> this is not that. Um, so this is about representations of transgender characters in TV and film and media in general. The director, Sam Fader, is trans himself, and every single person who speaks on, on screen in this film is trans, and it's really eye-opening, and it will totally make you rethink all of these movies and TV shows that you have consumed over the years, high culture to low culture, everything from bosom buddies to the silence of the lambs, you know, to... Uh, to the crying flip, game. Right, crying game to, to Flip Wilson's portrayal of Geraldine, the Flip Wilson show. Um, it's really interesting. And you have this wide array of voices. Um, Laverne Cox, Chaz Bono are a couple of the more famous ones. Travell Anderson is in it. Um, talking about a, a lot of behind the scenes folks, a lot of writers and directors, and um, people talking about their own experiences with seeing characters who are transgendered or who are men dressing as women and the kind of easy crass comedy of that over the years you know everything from you know the Uncle jeffersons Milty. yeah the jeffersons to um in living color but yeah black trans characters in particular and what that means historically and culturally um and it's it's really eye-opening stuff that seemed scary over the years it was meant for us to perceive as scary like the villain in the silence of the lambs you know or um the character in ace ventura peck detective that jim carrey makes out with and then realizes is is biologically a man dressed as a woman and the really over the top like vomiting and just and yeah, disdain but- and disgust that transpires afterward and a lot of the people in the film talk about how like the movies teach us how we're supposed to respond to trans people and how so often that response has either been violence or vomiting you know and and so i don't know i love a documentary about like i love a clip heavy culture documentary where people go back and sort of re-examine things that we maybe didn't have a second thought about in the media that were just sort of out there in the world and the people who are more directly impacted by those images sort of get their say about it um you know, I, the celluloid closet obviously is a movie that made it meant a great deal to me, and and uh, is one that I've gone back to over and over again. And I can see myself going back to this one over and over again as well. Uh, I, I found the perspectives really fascinating. The personal stories were really moving. Jen Richards, who who I, I've met once uh, or twice via Outfest, um, talks about seeing a supportive father on I Am Kate uh, in a scene where they go to this like, you know, uh, support group for for parents of trans children and what that meant to her and what it made her sort of think about yeah. her own life experience. Like, I, I cried at that. Like, that was such an incredible interview and such an incredible sort of piece of testimony. Um, yeah, I, I just, I think this movie is, is so important and so well put together. And it's also so smart about intersectionality, you know, when they talk about like, what does it mean when a black comedian wears a dress? And how does that make that comedian more palatable to white audiences? You know, they talk about race, they talk about gender, obviously, they talk about even the status of trans people in the queer community and how for such a long time, like gay men and lesbians did not want to think about trans lives did not want to acknowledge that they were a part of you know what we now call the lgbtq community which used to have other names that didn't that were exclusionary for trans people uh i just think this movie is is so essential and so fascinating yeah that scene from the l word was really eye-opening right that the yes. lesbian character tells this, this other young woman like you could be the biggest badass butch lesbian in the yeah, world no, pam greer tells, tells, it, in that, tells yeah right. pam greer t- telling a trans man that how you know it's such a tragedy that you're giving up your womanhood it's just like no no that's not what's happening here you know and, and is that the perspective of the show do you think or is that oh, 
yeah, no, that was the interesting sh- that, to me. That show gets dragged a lot for for that character, and 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 not just casting a cis person, but for the attitudes so often presented in terms of like, oh, you take you take testosterone, and you become a rage filled monster, you know, and this notion that yes, you're giving up your your womanhood. I will say that to to their credit, that the L word Generation Q, the sort of sequel series that started this year, um, has a really interesting and uh, you know, like they get the trans character a lot. They're they're a lot smarter in handling it. And the actor who plays the trans character uh, is one of the people interviewed here. Matt, um, yeah, this this is a fascinating movie, uh, and I'm so glad we watched it. Um, you know, you you try and think that you're open and accepting, and uh, and it's. You know, what's great about a movie like this is is it really gets you, it really helps you with the point of view of people that it would be nigh impossible otherwise. I mean, this is, you know, one of the great things film can do, right? Like, it really gets you in people's heads. And, and you know, in this particular case, it's with all of these folks that are sharing their own experiences. I mean, when they talk about the effect of the crying game and how the subsequent riffs on that that are in Ace Ventura and one of the Naked Gun movies and all this other stuff, like, re-does the idea, like, continues to, you know, reinforce the idea of, you know, almost like a tra- like a trans panic, right? Like, oh, if you're suddenly protect, you think you've got a woman and you suddenly see male genitalia, like, well, of course you're going to vomit. What else would you do? And And there's this... And it actually, like, it, it, it does something that I hadn't really thought about with the crying game in that, you know, so many people will talk about, like, oh, I knew D- Dill was a dude right off the bat, right? Like, a lot of people who have come out of that would – I remember at the time saying, oh, I could – immediately knew that Jay Davidson was a guy, um, even though presenting as a female on screen. But that scene – you know, and what's great about this movie is it recontextualizes that scene because you see that Dill in that movie is so sad. Dill is so sad that Stephen Ray's character, like, she thought he knew. And and that's a thing that, like, I never would have thought of and gets completely overlooked in all the discussions about that movie. Like, I would, it would be fascinating to revisit that story entirely from Dill's point of view, right? That, that you know, here's this woman who thinks that her partner knows who she is and doesn't and And also the idea that like oh is it the shocking ending don't tell anybody like they hyped up like a for like a lowest common denominator kind of like grotesque shock value my mom walked out of that film right after uh what's his name um forrest whitaker gets killed in that movie um she thought that was she thought that was the big reveal that was the big surprise. Uh, um, and I remember talking to my mom, I'm like, mom, that wasn't the surprise. No, there was. Um, uh, no, I, you know, what I, what I also liked is how they talk about the evolution of, you know, like you're saying, the, as, as time passes, the conversations, I think, change. And obviously we, we, you know, trans people get to tell their own stories more. They have this great moment where, like on Katie Couric's talk show, she has Laverne Cox and a model whose name I don't remember on. And she's asking questions about like their bottom surgery, essentially. And they're both like, no, that's, let's, that, that's not what I'm here to talk about. That is not a key part of my life. And Katie Couric was able to, in that moment, say, all right, please educate me. I asked a thing that I shouldn't have asked. How do I know? And I think so often as, as, as we go through the evolution, it's like, I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning terminology. I'm constantly learning stuff that I said, you know, not really piecing it together and realizing that I said something stupid and having to kind of go back and like learn stuff. And so, you know, I think one of the essential conversations that have been happening over the course of the events of the last couple of weeks with Black Lives Matter is this notion of like, if you want to be a good ally, the first step of that is sort of shutting up and listening and learning and letting the people directly involved with this tell their own stories and learn from them what to do next and so i think this is a movie where you have uh you know uh, actors and writers and directors who are trans telling their stories talking about how they've 
dealt with, you know, these media uh, present, you know, media images over the years and sort of kind of laying the groundwork of like, this is what works and this is how we want to be portrayed and this doesn't. And so I think this movie is a lot, is a great opportunity for people to let them talk and, and listen and learn and figure out, you know, what to do next. Leo Shang, by the way, is the actor on the on Elward Generation Q. I didn't have his name in okay. front of me. Um, there's also um, thinking of, sh of shows though that in theory are, are you know progressive in in their ideology. The scene from Sex and the City, when mm. all the ladies are sitting around having brunch and making fun of, I mean, it's it's um, what's her face, Miranda, not Miranda, Samantha in particular, yeah. who's like chicks with dicks, and you yeah. know, and. Uh, you and know I, I, making I, like, fun of it too. Exactly. Like Jen Richards has that amazing thing where she talks about how this notion that my being trans is something that I have to disclose at some point. And then she kind of unpacks, well, what does that mean? Does that mean it's a secret? Does that mean I'm trying to pull one over on you or that you need to know this because it somehow impacts? Like it, it, it was just, I love conversations like that where people are like, here's a thing that you've been thinking all along, but let's, let's really discuss what that means and what that what the implications of all that is you know uh yeah, yeah I, I i really this movie is is just illuminating and educational and historical and and just it's great yeah i i found myself as i'm going through this it led to so many more questions right like for for lily wakowski you know right what's it like i mean over and above like how awesome that 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 she and Lana bring in a trans character to their sci-fi story played by a trans woman. That was J right. Jimmy That's, on Sense8, yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, I find myself with questions, you know, specifically around for Lily, like, okay, how often do you see someone who had an older sibling transition in the public eye and then you get to do it in the public eye right like that's that's a whole other level of of just like has to be anxiety and 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 emotion to deal with right then there was that actress i can't remember her name who had for decades like the one on broadway the um oh, the black right. actress oh um, right yeah i who who I looked her up. only relatively recently had kind of come out, so to speak. Um, I, Sandra Caldwell. Sandra yes. Caldwell. So I find myself very fascinated by uh, and, and really intrigued and have all these other questions, but then think like, well, shit, it's not all their responsibility to educate us. Like at some point, you know, that's what I wonder about. Like at some point, like does Laverne Cox get to say like, okay, enough. Like, I'm tired of teaching everybody. I want to talk about other stuff for once. Well, I also but, really enjoyed the whole segment of the film about cis male actors playing female mm. transgendered characters and, like, getting Oscar nominations and awards for that. Like, Eddie Redmayne in The Danish Girl. Or, like, William Hurt and Kiss of the Spider-Man. Leto, yeah. Right, right. And all, all the, oh, so brave and so convincing, right. Um, and how, not to take away from those, the quality of the work, but, like, why couldn't there have been a trans performer in that role in the first place? I think we are, we're slowly getting to that place finally, because the excuse was always like, well, you know, there, there are no famous trans actors. And it's like, well, maybe because you aren't casting them in these roles and you aren't casting them in any other roles either, you know? Uh, and uh, I think for all of the issues that, that we might have with, uh, you know, Transparent, for instance, you know, in the casting of Jeffrey Tambor, like beyond that, that show had a ton of trans people on camera and behind the camera, you know, and which then, which, and then that becomes a stepping stone to a show like Pose, where, you know, you've got all of these lead characters practically, all, or at least everybody on that show who is trans is played by a trans performer and you've got you know janet mock directing and you've got uh you know all these different writers and producers who are working on it who who get it right and so again it kind of comes to this thing of like if you're waiting for the white cis 
straight Christian guy to tell the version of your life that doesn't jive with that person's experience whatsoever. It's like that person maybe needs to like step aside and let the people in who are telling it firsthand, who know what they're talking about and who understand it. And again, and, and, and then, you know, the, the, there's an audience for that. You know, there are people who want to hear that story and want to hear it told from the people who, who know it best. I also enjoyed the montage of movies in which female characters prove that they're actually female although they've been dressing like men like they're they, they all like rip their shirts open and it's like she's got and, tits and the like, reaction I, I forgot, to that right yes he's yeah. got tits i'd forgotten about just one of the guys which is a movie <laughs> i loved in the 80s so you've got right. that and yentl and Victor Albert victoria she's got right tits. and i love and that, like, that like, that's how you show you're a woman <laughs> right and and all of these trans folks are like yeah because that's what you do right like <laughs> Yeah. But that's an example of how they get their arms around so much here. It's almost like dizzying how comprehensive this movie is. And and to your point about is, is Laverne Cox tired of educating people? You know, she is the executive producer of this film. So obviously I think it's important for her to get this out. And, and, and maybe, yeah, maybe after this, she's done. She's like, look, I made this movie. It's all there. Go, go look at it, you know, but in any event, yeah, she, she shouldn't have to be constantly walking us through this. We should, do the do some of the work ourselves you know and i think this movie is a is a is a great first step in that and it's and i don't want to make it sound like it's broccoli because it is entertaining and engaging and really well put together it is i'm saying nine uh you know i said nine but i think i want to go nine and a half okay uh i don't remember what i had said but you said eight and a half no i'll say nine okay so we are a nine point two Okay, great. Yes, it's on Netflix, so please watch it. As Alonzo says, it's not broccoli. It's it moves beautifully. It's so entertaining. It's so yeah. enlightening. And yeah. it's and it's funny. Like it it, it's it's not all doom and gloom, right? Like this no. is it's it's what what's great about the human. I mean, this will sound so stupid for me to say, but like the humanity issue. It's like yeah, people are having fun. Talk- I mean, in a lot of cases, not across the board, but but it's yeah, it's it's very entertaining. And I think, you know, and again, like with Cellular Class, it's the kind of movie where, like, have a notepad handy because there's going to be titles that, like, I didn't know that. I'd never heard of this. I got to go back and watch this thing now, you know, not like, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the, are the, the, the sort of old, terrible representations, but I still find that interesting to look at as, you know, from a historical perspective. And I also, I'm also glad they also, they, they, they talk very specifically about the difference between the trans masculine experience and the trans feminine experience. And you hear from a lot of trans actors as well. So it's like, yes, you go in yeah. and you, you know, Laverne Cox and, and, and some other people, but a lot of the actors and, you know, like filmmaker Yan Ford, you may not know them or know their stories. And, and, and they are distinct experiences. And so I'm glad the movie kind of unpacks that as well. So thank you for watching, uh, as always. Uh, like this video, subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. Uh, follow us at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Check out our, uh, our Patreon page at patreon.com slash day. We are wrapping up our uh, recaps of The Great. And next week, we will begin our recaps of the new Hulu series, Love, Victor. Uh, and uh, we're also talking about God's Own Country this week. We gave uh, our members a choice of four or five uh, LGBT titles to discuss for Pride, and that was the uh, that got those votes. So we're going to talk about that one today. Uh, Christy, anything coming up uh, elsewhere that nope, you know about? Or? not a damn nope. thing. Okay, fine. That's where we are. That's <laughs> where the world is. There's just nothing else. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Take care of yourselves. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.